Today you will learn how to color your drawings in Photoshop. Have you checked out this new app, the one that makes you all old and wrinkly? I wanna try that. Because I'd like to see myself as an old man making videos at the age of 85. <laughs> Nah, I'm just kidding. I'd probably be somewhere up in the mountains enjoying the view, painting all day, having the time of my life, and reminiscing these beautiful days. Okay, it's getting a little emotional at this point. Let's leave it here. But I still want to try that app, which I'll do, by the way, at the end of this video. But before that, let me show you my process of how I color my drawings in Photoshop. But even before that, I actually have to draw something. So what do I draw? Hmm. I'll draw the Joker. Let's do this. Alright, so once I have my sketch ready, I scan it or take a nice photograph and tweak it a little bit before I color it. I like to create a nice contrast so I make the darks darker and the lights lighter. Make sure you don't overexpose the white areas though. I also like to lower the color saturation to make it grayscale. Once I do that, I open the file into Photoshop, double click on the background layer to unlock it and make a copy of that layer. I'll rename this layer to drawing and set the layer's blending mode to multiply. Then I make another layer beneath the sketch layer to start coloring. You can have multiple layers for coloring but make sure that your drawing layer sits on top. So I start with painting a base color first. For this drawing, I chose some warmer tones to paint the background. The idea is to put some warm tones in the background to contrast with the cooler greens and the purples on the character, which I'll paint later on. This color combination is referred to as Tritic Color Scheme, which means that it is made up of three colors, which are evenly spaced on the color wheel. After that, I chose the greens for the hair, cause you know, it's the Joker. Green hair. This is where the second color from the Tritic Color Scheme appears. The green. See how it kinda pops up? At this point, I'm just using flat color on the hair, but I'll be back to add some highlights. Some lighter yellow for the teeth and white for painting highlights on the skin. I'm using whites to add highlights on the forehead, above the eyes and on the nose, upper part of the cheeks and a little bit on the chin. The level of detail that you want to achieve in your drawings is always up to you and your artistic choice. Depends on the kind of aesthetics you are looking for. I usually tend to create what seem like an unfinished look, but again it's up to you of course. You can zoom in and paint in some details. I'm using some lighter greens to paint some highlights on the hair and darker greys to paint some shadows. I'm painting the shadows at the sides of the forehead and the cheeks and right below the nose and the neck. I also made the teeth at the sides a bit darker. 
I also like to use cross hatching technique while drawing to give it a more sketchy feel. But you can create a clean simple line art and paint or shade it entirely in Photoshop. Whatever style suits you best. Finally some purples for the clothes. You see greens and purples together? You know that it's the joker right there. Purple is the third color from the Tridec color scheme that we talked about earlier. The visual starts to seem interesting as the three colors appear together on the canvas in harmony. You can use different shades of purple to hint shadows and highlights on the clothes. I want the edges to look a bit unfinished and leave the brush strokes merging into the background. Now I want to paint the reds for his lips, but the problem is that I've inked those lips black. So if I paint the red color beneath the drawing layer, it won't be visible since it's hidden beneath the blacks. So I'm gonna make a new layer, put it on top of the drawing layer and then paint in the reds. I use darker reds for the upper lip and lighter red for the lower one. I also darken the sides to create a hint of shadow. Finally, I used some bright or lighter red to create a little highlight on the lower lip. Alright looking good so far. After that, I make a new layer on top of that, set its blending mode to multiply and select the orange color from the background. I am then painting the textures on top of my artwork for a nice grunge feel. You can experiment with different texture brushes to see what fits best with your artwork. I feel like this technique also helps your colors fit together nicely. Notice how little tones of orange is showing on the skin and on the hair. I personally find it very interesting. You can also try experimenting with different blending modes and you might end up with some happy accidents. Let's do a nice black border for this illustration. So I'm gonna crop it, create a layer underneath this artwork and fill it with black color, simple. And in the end, let's try something else. Let's try some lettering for the joker laugh. I'm doing it on a new layer which I kept on top of all layers. I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep it in the final piece. Maybe you can help me decide if it looks good with the lettering or without it. Let me know in the comments. But for the purpose of demonstrating, I'll just do it for now. And here's the final result. Now you can print this artwork and hang it in your room. That is, if it doesn't freak you out. Thank you for the support. If you like this video, please leave a thumbs up. What would you like to see in the next video? Let me know in the comments. Also, if you want to see more content related to art and design, please consider subscribing. I post videos every week. Make sure you follow me on Instagram because I post a lot of stuff there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. Oh, and by the way, I tried that app and it did show me how I would look like at the age of 85 making YouTube videos. Check it out.